If there's one single video you should watch over which audio interface you should buy, it's going to be this one. Not only will I make recommendations based off my experience, but I'll tell you which you should stay away from and talk about the huge audio interface trap you should avoid. Now, if you've been watching my channel for some time now, you may have noticed I no longer review audio interfaces as much as I used to, and honestly, it's because at a certain point, it just gets redundant. Now, you may agree or disagree with the points I'm going to make in this video, and either way, that's fine. I'm just using my experience to help make recommendations to those who need it and feel it's important I discuss what needs to be said about buying new audio interfaces. Now look, I'm an old head and way before audio interfaces existed, we cut demos on cassette tapes using devices like the Tascam Porta Studio Mark II. Now back in those days, there were several of these cassette-based and even digital recorders being made by companies like Tascam, Fostex, and Roland, and nobody cared about which of these devices had the best specs. You just bought what you could afford and got to making music, end of story. And if you felt like you had a hit on your hand, you took what you recorded, booked studio time in a professional studio with a professional audio engineer and ended up with a quality product at least recording wise. Nowadays technology has gotten so good we've come such a long way that we're able to record at home and if you've got the environment and skills to match you can create professional sounding music right out of your bedroom. And while that's a fantastic thing, it was only a matter of time until every audio company under the sun released their own audio interface. We've got Focusrite, Tascam, Behringer, Mo2, Audient, Avid, Universal Audio, Apogee, Neve, Solid State Logic, RME, Personis, IK Multimedia, Lewitt, Black Lion Audio, M Audio, Arturia, Steinberg, and that's not even the end of the list. There's so many options, and again, while that's a great thing, with the emergence of gear-focused forums and reviews, people have gotten so wrapped up worrying about the tool instead of the skill. For example, let's say you have audio interface A. It does everything you need it to. There's absolutely no reason why you should ever need anything else, but then a company drops audio interface B. It's a carbon copy of audio interface A, the same connectivity, even the same form factor, but you find out it's got 0.5 dB of improvement somewhere on the spec sheet. Maybe it claims the converters are better or has improved preamps, and it even measures to reflect that 0.5 dB difference. All of a sudden, you feel like audio interface A, the same interface that's been getting you by and all you could ever need is now obsolete compared to audio interface B. So what do you do? You rush out to get the shiny new thing thinking these minuscule differences are going to make your product better. You then get caught up in an endless upgrade cycle because eventually another company drops audio interface C with another 0.5 dB of improvement somewhere and you now feel like you have to upgrade again. And I've had plenty of people ask me if they should jump from one $300 audio interface to another $300 dollar audio interface because they think they'll get better results and the truth is you should only buy based off two things. What connectivity do you need? How many microphones, headphones, instruments, or speakers will you connect? And driver reliability. It doesn't matter what those specs or measurements say or how sweet those preamps sound if it doesn't work properly. Point is, an audio interface that has a few improved specs over another audio interface isn't going to magically make your music or content better. In the end, whatever you produce, if it's good, it's good. And whether you're recording on a $200 Focusrite Scarlett or a $3,000 Apollo X8, talent is talent and will always exceed the tool. That said, if you're a professional who's been doing this for years and are an accomplished engineer, I can certainly understand why these things may matter, but for the majority of us home studio people and content creators, especially those new to the game, you don't want to get caught up worrying about gear and caught in the endless cycle of always spending money on the newest thing. Get what you need, end the search, and focus on your craft. If you're finding this video helpful, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you really want to help support my channel, use my links in the description, which help me to earn a small commission so I can make more content like this. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get down to which audio interfaces I'd recommend. Now if you've already got a current gen interface and you're happy with it, there's no need to spend more money on minimal gains. This is aimed at those who don't have an interface yet or are in need of an upgrade because your current device is outdated. 
Now, if all you need is up to two microphones, one instrument, two pairs of headphones, and up to two sets of monitors with a USB connection, I highly recommend the $300 Audient ID14 Mark II. I've gone through so many interfaces in this range and have found zero driver issues and solid, clean preamps that measure at some of the quietest in the game. If you can't get solid recordings out of this interface, no other interface in the range is going to improve that. But maybe you need more than that. Maybe you want a rack mountable interface or want to connect more sets of monitors or run outboard gear and bypass the pre's, or maybe you need MIDI for your instruments. Well, look no further than the Mo2 Ultralight Mark V, which retails at $595. You've got two super clean pre's on the front, a headphone port, and OLED screen. On the back, you've got up to six line inputs, a whopping 10 line outputs, SPDIF in and out, ADAT in and out, MIDI in and out. It comes with its own power supply and connects via USB-C. For 90% of us home studio folks, this should be all we'll ever need. It just comes down to how much connectivity you require. I've personally used both of these interfaces for extended periods of time and can absolutely vouch for their quality, driver reliability, and they both come in at excellent affordable price points. As far as which models you should avoid, I'll start off with the wildly popular Universal Audio Apollo series if you're on PC. This specifically applies to their Thunderbolt devices that have given Windows users problems for years, myself included. If you need a Thunderbolt interface on PC, I'd stay away from the Apollo line. Another reason is that this line was developed with the intention that the user will be heavily reliant on their DSP plugins, so unless you're already invested, I just feel like DSP will eventually become a thing of the past, especially with advances like the Apple M2 chips and so on. Now, if you really feel like you just want their plugins anyway, that's okay. But the main reason I think you should not buy an Apollo device, at least right now, is because I'm pretty sure they're about to drop a new line. It's been several years since the X series dropped, and they've been having crazy sales since Black Friday, which leads me to believe something new is on the horizon. I'd also recommend avoiding anything Antelope Audio. Initially, I gave them stellar reviews and was pretty impressed with everything, but eventually the software couldn't keep up with the hardware. I began to experience frequent bugs, a strange hiss that never went away, and began to have intermittent connection issues with their servers, especially at boot up. Now, if you're not familiar, you're required to be connected to their servers. It just left a bad taste in my mouth, and I now try to stay away from interfaces that rely too much on software. Now let me know in the comments what you think about everything I discussed in this video. It was definitely more in depth than I originally planned, but I hope you found it helpful from someone who's been a home recording enthusiast for years. Now that's going to wrap things up for today. So until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned and have a great rest of your day.